Um, I don't know. I'm sorry, normally the interpreter would be here. But mm. Mind if we just wait and see? Is that okay? Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, I can advise that uh, in terms of the, the number of people who are deceased following the Toowoomba Lockyer Valley tragedy, there is no change uh, to the number of people. It still remains at 15. However, I do stress that extensive search and rescue operations are still underway. However, I can confirm here today that uh, one of the people who are confirmed deceased was found 80 kilometres downstream from where they were reported missing. And I think this just demonstrates and highlights the complexity of these search and rescue operations and also the time that's going to be consumed are searching all of the creeks and streams associated with this river system. So again, I can only just ask the community, we, know, we understand that people are anxious, we understand the concerns that the community has, but I do ask that they try to be as patient as possible. Uh, this is a very extensive operation. A lot of resources have been put into the search and we're doing the best we can uh, to complete the search as quickly as possible. In terms of trading hours, under the disaster declarations, uh, trading hours will be extended this weekend in the communities of Bundaberg, Gladstone and Ipswich. Uh, the advice is that trading hours in other communities at this point are not required to be extended. However, uh, if that is needed, we will certainly undertake that. So at this point, uh, Bundaberg, Gladstone and Ips Ipswich will have extended trading hours on this weekend. I can also advise that a team of 80 specialist uh, Queensland Fire and Rescue Officers, uh, including urban search and rescue teams from both Queensland and New South Wales, uh, along with 36 recruits uh, from Queensland who commence their training this week, uh, will be deployed into Brisbane and Ipswich to assist with the initially rapid damage assessment in those communities and then also clean up operations. They've been briefed this morning. Uh, they will be deployed to those communities this afternoon and they're in addition to a team of 42 Queensland Fire and Rescue Officers who were deployed into the Lockyer Valley area on Wednesday. There, have been, there has been some concern raised in the community about looting and the Commissioner will say a few more words about that in a moment. However, I want to give a clear warning uh, to anyone contemplating looting in the current environment. Under the Criminal Code, uh, looting in a disaster situation, the maximum penalty doubles from five to ten years. This is considered to be an extremely serious offence in these circumstances and again I warn people who are seeking or uh, contemplating engaging in looting activity, the maximum penalty doubles from five to ten years and the Commissioner will give some more information about uh, that in a moment. Uh, on a two final matters, uh, the the uh, inner city bypass is still currently closed. Uh, we have uh, Queensland Fire and Rescue teams currently on site um, pumping water uh, and trying to clear and we'll provide more advice uh, as soon as it's open. We'll get that out to media outlets. And the final matter, uh, developments in Gundawindi are still ongoing. Uh, the peak is yet to arrive. It's expected sometime this afternoon. Uh, there have been a, a number of uh, voluntary evacuations to date, around 100 people overnight in the evacuation centres and yesterday, uh, as has already been advised, uh, evacuations of the nursing home and hospital took place. So the Gundawindi situation is still a live issue. Uh, the peak expected this afternoon has been monitored very, very closely, but a comprehensive plan for evacuation, if required, is in place and the community, of course, will be given plenty of notice uh, when that's to occur. I might ask the Commissioner to say a few words and then we're happy to answer questions. Thank you, Minister. Uh, well, if I could just follow up on what the, the Minister's observations about the law in relation to looting, and we have it here for you if you wish to see it afterwards. Under the Criminal Code, the offence of stealing is contained within Section 398 
but a subsection of section 398, section 13, perhaps I could just read it to you, stealing by looting. If the offence is committed during a natural disaster, civil unrest or an industrial dispute, or the thing stolen is left unattended by the death or incapacity of the person in possession of the property, the offender is liable to imprisonment for 10 years, which, is, as the Minister said, is twice the uh, normal penalty. And sadly, so far this week, uh, we have arrested 10 people now on a total of 18 charges in relation to looting. Um, but I think the clear message with this for those very, very small number of people who might be tempted to loot and steal other people's property uh, is this. You will be caught. You will be caught. And one of the main reasons we've apprehended these 10 people currently on these 18 charges is because of information provided to us by the public about what they were doing. Uh, so people are onto this. Uh, and we're very grateful for that. So if any member of the public has any information, even if they just have serious concerns and suspicions, please contact us. The best way to do that is on Crime Stoppers, 1800 333 000. If I could just add to the Minister's uh, comments too about the current searching activity, activity in the Lockyer Valley, uh, that's presented today around Grantham. Uh, yesterday, uh, the searches, and there's over 200 people involved in this, uh, well over 100 from the Australian Defence Force, uh, soldiers, uh, a large number of police and a large number of state emergency service personnel. Yesterday they searched through the houses, the damaged houses and the damaged cars at Grantham. Today they're staying in the Grantham area and they'll be searching uh, paddocks, fields and uh, in and around and underneath the numerous amounts of debris and, um, and damaged property that's, uh, that's out there as well. So we hope that um, that aspect of the searching will be concluded today, but the, the degree of difficulty and the size of the search area is such uh, that this search can't possibly be completed until uh, some time next week. And now that's the only comments I had, unless of course obviously you had any questions. Uh, Minister, um, mine speakers are going to be used to get some of the debris out of the river. Can you give us any indication as to when that will start and how long it might take? Well, that's a matter which is currently being um, considered, but certainly that uh, uh, Maritime Safety Queensland and the Department of Transport are looking at that issue. Again, it'll be when it can be safely undertaken. Uh, as you would have seen even today, there are considerable and large amounts of debris uh, floating down the river. It is simply too unsafe uh, to conduct those types of operations at the moment, but as soon as the waterways are clear enough, uh, to conduct those operations that will occur as quickly as possible, obviously uh, for the safety of the port uh, and other people who may be using the waterways. What are the conditions like in the Lockyer Valley today? Uh, are well, better for search and rescue teams? Well, they've remained unchanged um, for a couple of days now. Very difficult terrain, uh, very difficult circumstances. And as we've identified today, uh, you know, one of the missing persons, one of the people who have been confirmed deceased, uh, was found 80 kilometres from where they were reported missing. And this just really highlights the complexity, the difficulties and the time it's going to take to complete the search and rescue operation. It is a massive exercise, hundreds of people involved in it, uh, and we just ask people to be patient. Uh, it is a very difficult set of circumstances for the families and we understand that. Uh, but we do need to do this thoroughly, and, and that's what's occurring. So there is the possibility that you might not find all of these missing people? The Commissioner might, make them, might wish to make some further comment, but I think that, that is clearly the case. Uh, we just don't know how far uh, some of these um, people may have been taken by these floodwaters. Commissioner, did you want yeah, to that? That's a good question. Look, we would certainly hope we'd find them all. As I mentioned, we've got over 200 people involved in the searching. Um, uh, there's over 200 kilometres of waterways that are part of that searching apart from the land area. Um, but regrettably, we could not exclude um, completely the possibility that someone uh, may never be found. We've been talking about missing people out in the Lockyer Valley and the Grantham region. Are there any missing people in Brisbane? Are we confident that we've, everyone's accounted for here? No, not that we know of at the moment. Uh, but again, regrettably, we can't exclude the possibility uh, that after the, uh, you know, the floodwaters subside uh, that someone may not be reported uh, as missing. But so far, um, Brisbane and Ipswich have, have come through this reasonably well. Um, we've had one death in Brisbane uh, and several at Ipswich, and, and that's a terrible loss of life. But when you consider the number of people that have been impacted by this, you know, and, and what we ask again, of course, is that people continue to heed those warnings about not, uh, under any circumstances, you know, venturing into this flood water to wait for it to go down and, and clear before they go and check their homes. Just 
Just in regards to those cases of looting, I mean, it just goes against the spirit of the recovery, doesn't it? It does, and it goes enormously against the spirit of the, the great character that we've seen across Queensland in terms of the response from people, the way they've supported each other, the way the volunteer agencies have contributed, and the great character and resilience that we've seen that's been commented on quite, quite appropriately. But could I just stress uh, that, that the number of people involved in this, we've got 10 people on 18 charges, uh, 10 people out of millions uh, that have you know, been in some way or another... Um, affected by this or uh, in, the, in the southeast corner of Queensland from Rockhampton, uh, Emerald, uh, Theodore down. Uh, so those numbers don't represent uh, in any way uh, the true character of the people of Queensland. How many of those cases have been in Brisbane? Uh, nearly all, yeah. I think there's just uh, one at Ipswich and the rest have been in Brisbane. What would you say to people that... Um discover looters? Would you say do something yourself or I mean you have, obviously they'd have to act quickly in order to stop them? The people who see this? Yeah, R ring the police don't try and intervene yourself uh, ring the police, uh, record what you see particularly if there's a vehicle, vehicle detail and call the police What kind of things have people been stealing? Uh, motorbike helmets um, uh, there's been the theft of um, some small dinghies and things like that uh, that's one of the sad things about it. I don't think there's a lot of thought or planning that goes into this. It's very opportunistic. Um, and it, you're right, it really does make people angry, and rightly so. Because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, most people are out there helping, and um, these few people are taking advantage of others' misfortune under the most uh, difficult of circumstances for those people. Uh, Minister, uh, some reports of some fuel shortages, shortages at some servos around Brisbane. Um, have you received word of that and how are fuel supplies going at the moment? Um, I haven't personally received that advice, but we do have uh, people involved in resupply, not just of foodstuffs, uh, but also of significant items such as fuel. Um, so uh, if those shortages are being identified, they will be fed through the system uh, and arrangement put in place to ensure that that refuelling occurs. Uh, these issues have arisen not just in Brisbane and Ipswich, uh, all throughout Queensland, uh, resupply, refuelling, uh, particularly for aircraft and, and other vehicles, has been a major part of the response uh, right across Queensland. Okay, okay nothing else. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. <coughs>